As the ruler of the Mongolian Empire, Genghis Khan's influence was widespread. At the height of his reign, Khan controlled Asia all the way from the Pacific Ocean in China to the Middle East. The Mongol Empire was vast. At its peak, it spanned an area roughly the size of the African continent. Khan's descendants continued the expansion further into what is now Eastern Europe and south into Vietnam and over to Korea. Genghis Khan's conquests were typically bloody and complete slaughter of his enemies eh, was common. However, he was also developing a writing system. He abolished slavery, he allowed religious freedom, and encouraged trade along the Silk Road, uniting Europe with the Far East. Khan lived from 1162 until 1227, living until the ripe old age of 65. That, that's actually impressive for his time, especially considering what his lifestyle must have been like. Super hectic. Khan certainly was an idol, and amongst his many military conquests became, became huge dalliances with women. This led to a massive rate of uh, procreating, which the results of can be felt today. Millions of men living in the Central Asian region of the former Mongol Empire have been classified as direct descendants of Khan. In 2003, genetic scientists carried out a case study relating to the descendants of Genghis Khan. The study focused on linking the DNA of men in the Central Asian region with that of Khan. By studying Y chromosome data, the scientists were able to calculate a startling figure. Approximately 16 million men share a direct DNA link with Khan. This accounts for 8% of men in the former Mongol regions and around 0.5% of the world's male population. There have been some wildly inaccurate claims regarding this number, such as 40% of the world's male population are related to Genghis Khan. However, a 2003 study can clearly point to 16 million descendants. To put it really simply, that's about one in every 200 men in the world being related to the Mongol ruler. So, how exactly did they figure this out, and how reliable is their research? The basic answer comes down to the Y chromosome. The Y chromosome is one of two chromosomes in mammals that determines gender. Y and X chromosomes are found in males, while only X chromosomes can be carried by females. The Y chromosome is passed down directly, from the father to the son, and in the 2003 study, the genetic scientists studied the Y chromosomes of 2,000 men in the Central Asia area. They were surprised to find a huge number of the DNAs of these men were virtually the same, which is highly unusual. They then traced the lineage of the shared DNAs via their likely geographical origins, and they were not only able to pinpoint the area covered by the shared DNAs, but the probable time that the spread of the same Y chromosomes took place. The region of shared DNAs stretched from the far eastern shores of China all the way to the doorsteps of Europe in what is now modern-day Russia and the Middle East. The time that this mass spread of the Y chromosomes was determined to have happened around the beginning of the 13th century. That ah, perfectly matched the marches of Genghis Khan. And it is only through the movements of such a mobile and aggressive ruler as Khan that the significant spread of his DNA was made possible. The only conceivable way for the same Y chromosome to have been spread around so prolifically is if the original possessor had some kind of social advantage. Genghis Khan had some social advantage. The Mongols were expert horsemen, and they could cover and conquer extraordinary areas of land in a very short time. They could travel up to 130 kilometers a day, which gave them a huge sphere of influence and control. Khan was also renowned for his relentless pursuit of women across the massive Mongol Empire. When a town or a population was conquered, the Mongol armies took immediate stock of any valuables. This also included their claim to any woman, with Khan receiving the first choice for himself. As a result, Khan had so many sons to so many mothers, with the process being repeated over and over across the large region of the Asian world. One of the study's leaders described this phenomenon as a kind of transgeneration amplification effect. With the Y chromosome coming directly from the father, the lineage of 16 million men in Central Asia today can indeed be traced back to a highly um, energetic individual who lived about a thousand years ago. Genghis Khan and his male descendants aren't the only examples of a highly extended Y chromosome lineages. Genetic scientists have confirmed two other lineages that also stretch back hundreds and hundreds of years. The first started in China with Jiu Kanga. He was a Qing dynasty ruler who died in 1582. Scientists studied the Y chromosomes of a thousand men from the Mongolia and northeast China regions. Like the Genghis Khan studies, they also found a significant number of the same DNA which came from the same old lineage. This was traced back to the origins of the Qing Dynasty some 500 years ago. At the time, the Jiu Kanga was a powerful and influential Chinese ruler. This meant several wives and the frequent use of concubines and the subsequent fathering of children made them, uh, many of which happened to be boys, by the way, made them pretty prolific. 
children born into the Chinese upper classes were also guaranteed of a longer and healthier life expectancy, leading to more chances of growing older and fathering even more children. Yet another international lineage has been traced from medieval Ireland. Liao Noidjelach was a 5th century warlord who was not only destructive on the battlefield, but uh, actively fertile. Gotta love these synonyms today. Also known by his more catchy nickname of Niall of the Nine Hostages, Niall's Y chromosomes have been directly linked to around 3 million men around the world. The majority live in Ireland, Scotland, and North America, with up to one man in 12 in Ireland being a direct descendant. King Niall's name is still widely recognized as a common modern Irish surname, O'Neill. During his reign, Niall conquered much of what is in the present United Kingdom. Like Genghis Khan in China's Jioganga, he was also tireless in the bedroom, fathering dozens of children that led to his ever-expanding dynasty. Documents and written records dating back to the 13th century help provide further evidence that the apples they didn't fall too far from the tree. Written accounts from one of Genghis Khan's many sons acknowledges that he had at least 40 sons, all of whom would have passed on the same distinctive Khan Y chromosome. Other accounts mention one of Khan's grandsons to have had 22 grandsons officially. Its numbers probably double that, considering that harems were commonplace, with up to 30 new women being added each year, which of course is very similar to Jiokanga and the lifestyle of Chinese royalty and the practice of keeping concubines. When we sit back and look at the lives men like Genghis Khan led, it's not difficult to see how they could have spawned so many descendants. Wild nomadic lifestyles that took them across vast distances allowed them endless opportunities to father staggering numbers of sons. If nothing else, the discovery of such far-reaching lineages has stirred up some interest in our own DNAs. We've seen the rise in popularity of DNA and ancestry websites that allow us to find out just where exactly did it all begin, and will I be surprised?